Want to know if Bontek can improve your Corel TK1? So your prints come out with smoother surfaces and sharper details. Watch the rest of the video to see how. Hi, I'm Armin. I'm hoping you're having a great day. I'm here at Bontek and uh, today we are gonna walk you through the steps of uh, diagnosing your K1, K1 Max or K1C. This is a fairly simple procedure and it's gonna take you about 10 minutes. First off, uh, we're gonna be routing printer in order to be able to change run current and rotation distance. Also, to get proper input shaping, uh, which means more insight and access into the machine workings. We will be replacing uh, the firmware with a more open firmware version and that version is made by Guilus. You can find the link to their GitHub in the uh, description below. Uh, this will also make customizations easier and uh, it also adds a bunch of useful macros. So now we are uh, going to get root access and we are I'm going to do that by <coughs> going into settings, root account information. You need to wait like 30 seconds before you can accept and press OK. And account, root, password, Creality 2023. Now when we have gained root access, you can press OK. So now we are going to remove the USB drive from the printer and we are going to format it in FAT32. And we are going to download the latest firmware. So this is the image file that we have downloaded. We're going to copy that. And paste it onto the USB drive. Now you can take it out from the computer. Turn off the printer and turn it back on again. So now when we get to the home menu, we can insert the USB. And a new window pops up where it says that new version is found and we are going to push on upgrade. Now the upgrade is done, we also suggest that you uh, do the recalibration before slicing and printing, just to check so everything is okay with the firmware. Select both, start detecting. So, when self-check is completed, just push OK, go back to home menu. And now we are going to uh, install a helper script. This script is really, really great. So if you can, please give uh, Will Rose credit for that. Uh, we are going to uh, connect to the printer uh, SSH. I'm uh, using a putty. We're going to use the host name, which is the IP number. You can see, check it on uh, network settings. This is ours. 
So we're going to use that one. Port 22, SSH. Now the login is root and password reality 2023. Now we are in. Next is copy, paste. So in our case, it already exists. So we are moving to next one. Copy, paste. This is the helper script. We have a bunch of things to install. Type in number one, enter. And here you can see all the things that you can install. We need to install Moonraker and Nginx. We are doing that now. Yes. We are going to install mainsail. So in order to install improved shapers calibration, we need to install uh, clipper Jiko shell command. Number five, enter, yes. Done. And now number 10. Yes. Useful macros. It's always good to install. So we're going to do that as well. M600 support if you like to um, do color changing and pausing. Let's take that one as well. And with that, we are done with this part. So now we are going to enter mainsail and we are doing it by typing in your IP number, followed by colon 4409 is for mainsail and 4408 is for fluid. Enter. And we are in. Here we have input shaper calibration. Autotune shapers, the one that we are going to use is test resonances graphs. Let's perform that. So now the test is complete and uh, we can check out our graphs. Let's go into machine, helper script, improved shapers. Let's see. The y-axis is um, pretty good. It has one nice stable peak. And the recommended shaper for that one is MZV, which is pretty good. And uh, let's see x-axis. Here we can see that the x-axis isn't looking too good we can state that the input shaper is unable to find a resonant frequency. As a result, we will get a lot of smoothing and vibrations in the print. Uh, we will select 3 hump EI as a shaper, since that has the least amount of vibrations introduced in the print. The downside here being low recommended accelerations and high smoothing radius. We will also set the max acceleration to this value in the graph uh, in order to make sure the presented recommended value is being shown in the print. Let's um, set the new values in a printer CFG file.
when uh, we have done the changes and uh, typed in the new values, we will uh, save and restart. Now we are in Creality's Slicer, Creality Print. We have the file that uh, Clipper Project has made. This is especially suited to get a visual representation of what's going on uh, with your machine. Uh, you can find it in the uh, description below. We will slice it using two perimeters. So let's go in and change that. Two perimeters. Zero percent infill. And we can also remove the top layers. And I have two bottom layers. So when that's done, uh, we're going to speed and change outer wall speed to 100 and inner wall speed to 100. And slice. Let's start the print. So now the print is done and we can take it out and check the res results. As uh, we can see here, there is uh, substantial ringing and uh, smoothing in the print surface. This uh, indicates there is room for improvement in the motion system. And uh, in order to make sure your prints are accurate and beautiful, it should be addressed. Fortunately, we have a solution for this. Each machine doing this test will present different results. If your x-axis resonance test presents a smooth single peak graph similar to the y-axis, then you don't need this upgrade kit. On the other hand, if your x-axis resonance test presents a jagged graph with multiple peaks, your printer will definitely be limited in its performance and will deliver subpar parts. In the latter case, we strongly recommend you upgrade to add value, capacity and durability to your K1. Here are the options we have for you.